Okay, I'm back for another adventure with the um, Liberator Atari PCB board. I got the chips in that I needed to get the self-test uh, hopefully working. So there's the chip there. Let me install it. All right. And this chip needs to be plugged back in. Good. All right. Let's see if that fixes the um, RAM test to actually report bad RAMs now instead of, you know, ghost errors. Let's see what happens. Hmm. No change. Absolutely no change. The exact same problem. Well, let me get the scope fired up here. Let's see what that new chip is doing that I replaced. Let's see. It was pin 12 on R9. That was the pin that I was having problems with. N12 on R9. Well, it's working. That's what I would expect. Let me check the other ones. That's uh, pin 12 on the next uh, shift register. That looks like it might be sus a suspect there too, though. That one's nice and clean. That's the new chip. And then this one is the last one. So all of those look reasonable to me. Is there anything else I want to probe here? Um, all right, well, let me probe around. I really thought that would fix this. I'm really surprised that that bad chip didn't have, uh, didn't make more of an impact. All right, I'll be back. Okay, um, it's been a few days since I last recorded anything, uh, since I last recorded the previous thing where, where I said I thought um, replacing this chip here was going to fix it. Um, this chip was definitely bad, okay, but it didn't fix the problem. Um, I've been probing around on this today, uh, I've spent some time on it, and I've decided that I don't actually have a bad chip anywhere. Um, and that the problem is a timing issue. And I studied the schematics some, and I noticed that Atari had put a capacitor here to slow down that ROM uh, enable signal. This, that, that ROM signal is what's used to enable the reading of the ROM data. Well, they put a capacitor there to slow that so that I believe the RAMs have time to finish writing their data. Well, I didn't account for this, this extra delay that's needed on the ROM enable. So the ROM is still accessing the data bus, um, or I should say it starts accessing the data bus. The ROM start accessing the data bus too early to where um, the RAMs are still trying to finalize their write cycles and it's corrupting the data. So I believe that's what's happening. Um, I did some tests, and um, I've, I've pretty much determined that all these RAMs were actually good. Uh, I believe this one was good too, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, I replaced it first because, you know, that's the RAM test was giving me an error. Um, this one here was funny. Um, I thought it might be bad, so I, I carefully removed it, and I put a socket there, and I put a known good RAM, and it still acted the same. So I've concluded that that RAM is good too. Um, so if all the RAMs are good, but we're getting the RAM error and there's no logic chip problems. I mean, I did find the one and that, that seemed logical that it might be the problem. Uh, but yeah, all the, all the chips are checking out. It's going to be related to this capacitor right here. This capacitor that Atari added to slow the rise of that ROM signal to give the RAMs more time to finish the write cycles. 
uh, because you see the ROMs happen on one side of the clock and the um, the RAMs happen on the opposite. So if, if if the clock cycles on the upward, you know, if it's high, then that's when the ROMs happen and the RAMs happen when it's on the low side. And it just needs time. I mean, there's some propagation delay going on with this. There's, there's, you know, this is like 50 nanoseconds or something. It's, it's, it's quite a bit more than this. It's like this, this delay through the prom is five times more than a, a logic chip, let's say. So these right pulses or right protection signals have to set up, and those are used by the RAMs. Um, the ROM signal. It's not only this capacitor that's adding delay, this ROM signal also goes through a number of gates. So the ROM signal's here. It's got to go through um, a, a NAND gate. That's a NAND gate. And it also has to go through a decoder. So this, there's quite a bit of delay on the decoder relative to just a gate. But uh, this is still like in the order of 10 nanoseconds. So let's say that that's 25. So you're looking at 35 nanoseconds, okay, of delay. Now on my on my design for the processor uh, Unirom board, there is no delay. It it directly uses A15 to to decode the address for the ROMs. So that's the problem. That A15 signal is rising too soon uh, and not giving the RAMs time enough to finish their duties. So I need to think about I need to think about how I can add some latency to that. Um, I don't think I can just add a capacitor because of the way I built the board. Um, I may I may be able to trick it with a, a RC time constant delay of some type, but uh, right now I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. But I will work on it. I'm pretty sure that's what the problem is. I'm pretty sure that the RAM tests are failing because the data in the RAM is just being corrupted. Um, well, that's it for this video. Um, I don't know when I'll get a chance to look at this again. And if you're following along you, with bated breath on these, I'm sorry, but uh, I've been having a lot of car troubles lately, and and um, that's the priority. This, this is secondary. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I really, really do appreciate it.